What is up YouTube, Ultimate Lock here. I'm gonna be going off and showing you how to quickly max out your energy cell battery in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So if this video does help you out, please make sure to leave a like and leave a comment on the video because it really helps out the YouTube algorithm. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So there's two items that we need to get in order to upgrade our batteries, Zonite Ore and Crystallized Charges, both of which can be found in the depths. The Zonite Ore we get will be eventually turned into Crystallized Charges, which is what we use to actually go off and upgrade our battery. Now, the best method for and most common method for going off and getting Zonite Ore is to raid bases like this. Now, I would highly recommend going off and not worrying about killing too many of the monsters, only kill the flyers and kill the archers. Don't worry about going off and killing anything else because if you do that, you're just going to be wasting a lot of resources and honestly speaking you can just run around and clean out all the zonite ore without having to deal with all the monsters as you just saw i used a puff shroom these shrooms are in abundance in the depths they are used to block vision allow you to easily run around the camp and clear the archers i generally use one or two of them per camp depending on the situation because you find them so commonly you don't really need to worry about using them also, this is a great way to farm arrows. These crates in the monster camps contains arrows that have a decent chance of being in a bundle of 5 or 10. So not only are you getting Zonite Ore by doing this, but you're also able to farm arrows as well. And keep in mind, whenever you go off and kill an archer, they always drop 5 arrows. So it's very important to go off and loot their corpses afterwards. Now, as I was saying before, it is best to ignore the monsters and just try to break all the Zonite rocks. Killing the monsters time-wise isn't worth it. Each of the monsters only drop about 1-2 to two ores when they are killed and cannot drop large Zonite ores, so it's not worth time-wise killing them. It's also best just to run around the camp and let your summons go off and distract the monsters while you go off and clear these rocks. The more summons you have, the more effective and easier this method will be, but keep in mind that these camps are literally everywhere in the depths, so it's going to be extremely easy to find them, and you're just going to be doing this very very often. For efficiency we will need to use a vehicle to take us around from camp to camp. This is one of the best ones currently available. It's a glider and it's pretty simple to make. Now obviously you're going to have to do this a few times because you might make a mistake and it might not work as intended but once you get it done you can just register it in the auto builder and you have it forever so just don't worry about it too much if you don't get this right right off the bat. Now I'm going to demonstrate how fast you can clear camps using this. It's actually pretty insane how quickly you can traverse the map using the glider, and it only gets better once you start upgrading your energy cell. Once it's maxed, you can pretty much fly across the map on a single charge, as long as you have the Zonai set bonus as well. And for those that don't know, if you're wearing all the pieces of the Zonai armor set, your battery life has doubled, so you'll be able to use Zonai devices for twice as long, which is super helpful when exploring the depths. Now, I have a complete video on showing you how to acquire all the pieces of the Zonai armor. It will either be at the end of the video, or it will be in the description, so if you're needing to go off and get that, I'd highly recommend checking that out. Now, as you can see here, you can pretty much run through camps in a matter of like 20 to 30 seconds. And of course, this is a small camp, but you can do this for even the larger camps. You're just going to have to use uh, a puff shroom or two in order to do that. And then once you go off and clear the camp, you just jump on your glider and you just yeet away. Now that we've gone over the monster camps, it's time to move on to the mines that are located in the depths. These mines have giant mineral deposits which can easily be farmed for Zonite Ore. I will be showing you the locations on the map of all the mines that I currently know of. Simply go to the surface location of the map, hit down on the d-pad, it will take you directly below your looking, and you can then put a star symbol or whatever symbol you want to mark the mine, and that way you know when you're in the depth that that's where you need to go off and start heading towards in order to unlock that mine. One thing to understand about the mines is that there's generally always a light route near them so you can go off and use that as a teleport location. The quickest way to clear out the mines is to use a Lyle bow with bomb flowers on the giant mineral deposits. 
Bomb flowers can be found in abundance in the depths, so as long as you're only using them for clearing the mines, you shouldn't have any issues with running out. The Lionel Bow is a must because any of the Lionel Bows multiply whatever you're firing by three while only costing one resource, which is amazing for combat and also for clearing mines. Each mineral deposit generally takes about six bombs, so if you're using a Lionel Bow, it only costs you two bombs. Most mines have two to three giant mineral deposits, so you're going to want to clear them all and then clear the smaller deposits and then rotate to the next mine. Now, these mines reset after every Blood Moon, so it's important that you clear them out as soon as Blood Moon happens. That way that you're always getting the most amount of Zonite or possible. Next, we need to talk about the forge constructs located in the depths, which is where you'll be purchasing the crystallized charges using the Zonite Ore. There are two types of crystallized charges you can purchase down here. The standard crystallized charges, which is purchased using zonite ore, and the large crystallized charges, which is purchased only using large zonite ore. For every three zonite ore, you will get one crystallized charge, and for every three large zonite ore, you will get 20 crystallized charges. Each forge construct carries 30 crystallized charges and five large crystallized charges, which totals 130 crystallized charges per forge construct. And since there's a total of five forge constructs in the depths, that equals 650 crystallized charges for all five shops. But since we're able to easily force a refresh, it won't matter how many shops you have unlocked, since we can just constantly refresh the shop's inventory. To force a shop refresh is actually pretty simple. We need to move the in-game clock by 24 hours or one full day cycle. So first we need to buy all the current stock of the crystallized charges. Then we need to fast travel to any of the light routes, but it needs to be a light route that's not near a forge construct. Alternatively, you can go off and use an inn. That costs 20 rupees, but you can just use this method right here and it'll be absolutely free, except for a few resources. Now, since we're now at the light route, we're going to move a little bit forward and we're gonna, just going to start a campfire. Now, once we have the campfire going, we're going to go off and sit till morning. And what this is going to do is it's going to push our in-game clock to about 5 a.m. Now that it's 5 a.m., a full day hasn't passed because I've only gone forward about five to six hours. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a campfire again and then set it for morning again, which will then do an entire cycle for a day. And then once that's done, we're going to go off and head back to the forge construct and the shop should be refreshed. So as you see, the shop's inventory has refreshed so we can purchase all the crystallized charges again. It's possible to max out your energy cell battery using only one shop and just constantly forcing a reset on the shop's inventory, but it's faster unlocked a few forge constructs and that way when you do a reset, you can clear out multiple shops inventory. So I'll be showing you the location of all five forge constructs in the depths. The first forge construct is located under Gerudo Town. The second forge construct is under the Temple of Time Ruins. This is also where you're going to be getting the auto build feature, so you most likely already have it unlocked. The third forge location is under Hateno Village. The fourth forge construct is under the Zora's Domain. Now, this forge construct is by far the hardest one to unlock. There is a small opening on the top and bottom to where you can actually get in, but it's generally pretty hidden. So if you don't know that those are the openings, it's really annoying to figure it out. The fifth and final forge construct is located under Rito Village. You can find the entrance of the cavern by talking to Podnik, who's standing near a campfire in Rito Village. So that's everything concerning the Zonite Ores. Now we need to go over the two methods of obtaining crystallized charges in the depths without using forge constructs. So as you're exploring the depths, you will notice there are many Yuga Clan bases scattered around. These bases give you one large crystallized charge for completing them, and most of them can be beaten extremely quickly. All you need to do is find the Yuga Clan member with the red circle and defeat that member. Once defeated, the storage shed will unlock, and there will be a chest inside containing one large crystallized charge. You will also get a Yuga schematic. This is a build blueprint for your auto build function. Since these bases are easy to complete, it's always best to complete them whenever you come across them. 
There's also a quest line called Master Koga of the Yuga Clan. This quest is started once you unlock the auto build function and most likely you already have this quest started. The quest also takes you to most of the forge constructs so by doing this quest line you will end up unlocking the forge constructs and the light routes for them which will allow you to fast travel to those locations. You will also get 100 crystallized charges every time you beat Koga totaling 400 crystallized charges throughout the quest which makes it very worthwhile completing this quest early on. The final method for getting crystallized charges is by killing the bosses located in the depths. All the bosses on the surface have a gloom variation which can be fought in the depths and when killed, they drop large crystallized charges. You can also fight the bosses from the regional phenomenon main storyline as well. This is a method for obtaining their special item drops which can be used as fusion material. My personal favorite boss to farm is the armor Lynels since they give you good fusion material for parts plus a crystallized charge. My recommendation is to farm bosses for upgrading your equipment instead of farming them on the surface you can go off and farm them in the depths which will also net you a crystallized charge as well as the standard drops. Once you have farmed your crystallized charges, you'll need to come to the crystal refinery located just north of Lookout Landing and for every 100 crystallized charges you have, it will fill one segment of your battery. Once you fully upgrade your energy will, you'll be able to use the crystallized charges to purchase zonite parts, which will come in handy in the future since you will still be able to get crystallized charges whenever you defeat a boss in the depths. Now that we've gone over everything you need to know, here's my recommendation on how to max out your battery fast. Unlock all the mines and a light route for that mine and start clearing them every blood moon. Then farm camps as shown in the beginning of the video. And if you come across a Yuga outpost, simply clear it in between camps. And if you come across a boss, make sure to mark it on your map. That way after a blood moon happens, you can come back and kill it for its large crystallized charge. Maxing out your energy well will take a lot of time, but it's most definitely worth the effort because it will save you so much time in the long run and allow you to do a lot of cool things with the new Zonite parts. Hopefully this video helped you out, and if it did, make sure to leave a like. So, as always, thanks for watching, and peace out.